everyone. How's it going? My name is Liz from the Definity Foundation and welcome to the Community Conversations. So this is an opportunity for you, the community, to hear from contributors in the internet computer ecosystem, as well as ask them questions live. Today, we have our very own crypto library team lead, Andrea Cerulli, who will go over the crypto component, which provides the cryptographic primitives for the four layers of the internet computer. So I will pass it over to Andrea. Thanks for the introduction, Liz. I'll just share my screen. Uh, can you all see the slides? Yep, can see it. Okay, good. And uh, yeah, so as Liz said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the crypto component. So the crypto component is the uh, uh, is the is the component of the Internet Computer Protocol that provides all the cryptographic functionality to the rest of the uh, of the layers in the in the Internet Computer Protocol. And uh, yeah, so this is meant to be still fairly high level, so that it's not going to be too technical. So hopefully, it will be uh, accessible to 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 everybody. Right. So as you are probably familiar with, uh, the Internet Computer is uh, a blockchain that transfers money uh, uh, canister smart contract. And uh, the Internet computer is, is composed by you know, uh, a parallel uh, subnet blockchain that uh, run at the same time in parallel. And uh, the subnets are actually operated by nodes or replicas that are uh, run in, uh, hosted in data center around the globe, so by independent data center. And uh, the, the, the replicas are actually uh, connected together, so they are talking to each other by uh, using the Internet Computer Protocol, which is a new blockchain protocol that the Definitive Foundation developed. Um, if we zoom a little bit in the, in the Internet Computer Protocol, we, we can see that uh, it actually consists of four uh, separate layers each with its own responsibility and, uh, and goals. So for example, the peer-to-peer -peer layer uh, is uh, responsible for reliably uh, distributing messages to all the, the nodes in the network. The consensus layer is responsible for arranging messages into blocks, agreeing on them and, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, and, and validating them. And the message routing uh, layer is responsible to uh, uh, scheduling execution uh, of messages and also is responsible for transfer strings between subnets. And finally, we have the execution layer, which is uh, responsible for performing the deterministic execution of canisters. Um, so each of these layers has its own responsibility. So you may wonder uh, at this point, okay, uh, okay, is this crypto? Is this a cryptographic protocol? Where is the crypto inside this, the internet computer uh, protocol? And uh, the, the question could be even, is there any crypto inside here? And, uh, and actually the answer is that yes, there's actually quite a lot of cryptography in, involved in the internet computer protocol. So now I'm just gonna uh, give a very high level overview of all the cryptographic primitives that are actually used inside the Internet Computer Protocol. So if you are a developer or an end user of the Internet Computer, you are probably already familiar with the fact that uh, uh, for some interaction with the Internet Computer, you have to use some digital signature. So for example, if you're making a transaction on the ledger, or if you are trying to install uh, a canister for the first time or trying to update the canister, uh, you may have to interact with an internet computer using a digital uh, signature scheme. So this is the, the probably the most visible, uh, you know, cryptographic primitive that, uh, that that is used in the internet computer protocol. It is the most visible from the from the outside uh, world. Uh, however, this is not the, the entire story. This is just you know the beginning of it. And uh, so similarly to what the user have to do, so in, uh, authenticate themselves using. Uh, uh, using a digital signature, also node needs to authenticate uh, themselves using a digital signature scheme. So, for example, in the consensus protocol, if I if I am a block uh, proposer, I can uh, propose a, you know a new block to my to my peers in the in, in the subnet by uh, applying a signature uh, to, to this block. So, if I then distribute this block together with the signature, so all the other nodes in the network will know that this block actually comes from me. Um, so digital signatures are just one of the kind of signature schemes that, 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 that are used in the, in the Internet Computer Protocol. There are actually more advanced uh, cryptographic uh, signature schemes that, that are used, for example, multi-signature. So multi-signatures are uh, standard uh, the digital signature schemes, so they allow you know, signer to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to sign messages, and, uh, but they also provide the possibility to combine uh, essentially signatures on the same message from multiple parties into a single signature in such a way that this signature essentially can be verified to be uh, put on a message on behalf of a group of people. 
And this is, for example, the, the, the kind of signature scheme that are used in the consensus protocol for uh, doing notarization and finalization of blocks. So whenever we have to you know, finalize a block, then consensus will try to construct such a, a signature so that you know, sufficiently many people are actually uh, putting their signature. And there is another kind of signature, which is actually very similar to multi-signature, which is called threshold signature. This is also very heavily used in the internet computer protocol. Um, so threshold signature, again, similar to, to, to multi-signature, involves multiple parties that can uh, try to collaborate and, and try to create a signature or, or a joint uh, signature jointly together. The main difference with multi-signature is that actually, in order to be able to even uh, realize such a signature, you actually need to have a, a minimum amount of parties that are actually contributing to the signature itself. Otherwise, you will not be able to create such a signature. And um, yeah, this kind of signature are, are actually used quite heavily in the, in, the, in the Internet Computer Protocol. These are, for example, at the core uh, uh, of the uh, of uh, the of the consensus protocols so that are used for the creation, for example, of the random beacon that is used to select the block makers, but they're also used for uh, certifying the state of the, the of the internet computer to create the catch up packages, for example. And um, so also, if you, if you are a developer, you may be familiar with the concept of uh, certified variables, and uh, uh, which is essentially a way that canister have to ask the internet computer to certify a portion of state. And uh, so if a canister does that, what it gets back is actually a certificate that consists of threshold signatures. And uh, another interesting fact about this, this certificate that you get, you get in the state is that you actually only need to ever know a single public key in the internet computer to verify any message uh, that is coming, that is certified by the internet computer itself. And this is also uh, enabled uh, by the, um, uh, by, um, uh, the, the specific properties of this threshold signature scheme. Um, so there are other uh, threshold signatures that are not yet implemented in the internet computer uh, and uh, that are, that are current, uh, currently under development. So for example, there, I'm sure that you all are aware that we are trying to integrate with the Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, blockchains, and uh, this is uh, uh, made available via threshold ECDSA signature. So a canister will be in the future, uh, hopefully in the near future, be able to to sign uh, uh, to create a, a threshold, uh, uh, sorry, an ECDSA signature, and this is uh, implemented uh, under the hood by a threshold ECDSA protocol that is run by the nodes of a subnet. And uh, so this is not uh, yet there, but it's coming and this you know fall under this uh, uh, set of primitives that are used in the internet computer. Um, still related to threshold signature, there's also the, uh, a distributed key generation protocol, which is relevant for them. So this threshold signature require a distributed protocol, not just to, cre uh, to create a signature, but also to generate this key material. And, um, and the distributed key generation protocol is actually really uh, at the core of uh, this uh, certification uh, uh, logic that I was trying to explain earlier, that, uh, you know, that Canister can try to certify some variables and you only need to have a, a single public key available to, to verify these certificates. So the, the, these distributed key generation protocol are not just used to generate this, this key material that is needed for threshold signature, but they also enable to reshare existing keys to new, a, set, a new set of participants. And the, this is really the core uh, idea of why you ever only need to have you know, a single key available for verifying um, signatures coming from the internet computer, because even if the set of nodes changes over time, even if you have new participants uh, joining the network is growing, uh, this distributed key generation protocol allows to securely reshare existing key material to a new set of parties so they can take over and, and, and still run the same certification in such a way that the old public key is, can still be used to verify those, uh, uh, those signatures. Um, again, uh, also for uh, the Bitcoin Ethereum integration, we will need to have some uh, dedicated interactive, uh, dedicated uh, distributed key generation protocol. So the scheme that we are using for certification is not uh, compatible with the signature used for, uh, um, for uh, uh, over the Bitcoin and the uh, Ethereum blockchain. So we will need to, to, to actually have like a, a new protocol. Uh, we are also making slightly different decision there. So uh, the, the protocol for the generating the threshold keys used for certification is, is non-interactive, which has uh, you know, some benefits that are actually quite useful in inside the internet computer. But uh, for the ECDSA threshold the signature, we are actually uh, opting towards an interactive protocol, which uh, will also enable to, uh, to, 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 to actually generate signature uh, a bit more efficiently. 
And um, right. And uh, maybe one last thing to say about the distributed key generation protocol is that uh, this cryptographic protocol under the hood is actually implementing quite a, a lot of advanced cryptographic primitives on itself. So, for example, there's you know secret sharing schemes that are using there. There are uh, zero knowledge proofs that, that, that they're using there. There's a forward secure encryption scheme that is used there. Uh, so yeah, the, 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 this is quite a, a, an involved uh, protocol. Um, yeah, in addition to this, there are also a bit more standard uh, cryptographic uh, schemes and protocols that are used. So for example, uh, uh, nodes uh, established uh, secure channels uh, for communication for in order to communicate. And uh, they, they do so by, uh, by uh, establishing TLS connections. And uh, we also use a bit uh, more uh, standard symmetric primitives, for example, to the random number generators. And these are used, for example, to derive um, um, randomness in the execution layer. Uh, and we also use hash function. Well, hash function are used all over the place. They are used to construct a blockchain itself, for example. But they are also used uh, as part of in, in certification. So the state is never, uh, um, it, when we certify the state, we are, we are actually certifying uh, an hash tree. Uh, a miracle tree of the of the state that allows to essentially derive a certificate for a small portion of uh, the state. All right, so this was not meant to be a very depth uh, introduction of all the cryptography that is done in the internet in the internet computer, but hopefully at least I was able to give you a very broad uh, uh, spectrum of of all the things that are actually happening behind the scene uh, like at the moment in the internet computer so this is everything that it is currently running uh, in, on the on the uh, on the internet computer uh, computer uh, at this point in time and uh, right and uh, the ne the next question here here would be okay there's since there's so, so much cryptographic scheme and cryptographic implementation that are happening in the internet computer where are they uh, actually implemented is this something that is scattered all, all over the protocol or there's a dedicated uh, uh, component that deals with, uh, with this implementation and the answer is that we have a dedicated uh, um, is that we have a dedicated uh, crypto component that actually consolidates all the cryptographic implementation in in a single place and the other layers of the of the internet computer protocol can actually interact with the crypto component to ask for help to okay now please compute a signature or now please verify these other signatures so they can ask the crypto component to to, to perform any um uh, any cryptographic operation that is supported um, the crypto component is also the place where the keys are generated and stored securely and is also where the decision about okay which algorithms are we actually uh, uh, going to use now and which keys are considered valid at the moment uh, for any interaction that is uh, that is actually happening on the internet computer um so when we were designing the the crypto component we tried to stick to some high level principle and uh, the first one is really that we really wanted to uh, to, to like all the cryptographic in one place, but uh, all the crypto schemes implemented in one place. But we also wanted to do so because we didn't want to every layer to essentially make their own, uh, you know, specific decision about schemes uh, or keys that, do, that they they consider valid or you know, um, uh, yeah, which algorithms to, to support. Uh, and this is really because uh, you know maybe if you know different layers make a different decision between uh, cryptographic primitives that they are using maybe combination of these may may not necessarily be uh, be secure uh, so by consolidating everything in one place we also make uh, uh, can can assure that you know all the decision are actually making a centralized place so that all uh, code that is used is actually consistent and uh, um, um, and all the decisions are, are are made uh, uh, consistently for um, for um, uh, for, for in relation to to keys and algorithms at least um the the other um uh, the, the one other principle that we actually try to follow is really about modularity so already the reason of consolidating all the crypto code in a single place it's also in order to make it easier in case uh, in the future uh, one discovers you know either when there are abilities in libraries or or, or one to one and want to swap one cryptography scheme for, for another or finds out that there are more efficient library out there uh, it, we will really try to make it, uh, you know, uh, uh, as transparent as possible for the rest of the internet computer to actually change, uh, make changes to, to the crypto code. And, uh, and this is really the, one of the motivation why we, we actually did that is because uh, uh, we, we, we really, uh, at some point, we we'll probably need to, 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 to uh, you know, 
um, uh, fix some algorithm or there will be vulnerabilities in dependency and we will, we will like you know to, to swap these out as, as easy as possible and uh, the last guiding principle is really that you know the crypto components should be the only place where secret keys are are, are dealt with and uh, there are no you know keys are, are never exported and you know this should be the only place where keys are actually used as well Right. So now that now that we looked a little bit at the high level of what uh, what, what was the motivation for uh, for having a crypto component in the in the Internet Computer Protocol, uh, we can look a little bit inside about how the, the crypto component is structured. So at a high level, we can see that the crypto component consists of two main layers. So one external layer, which is what we call identifier to key mapping, or also called uh, with the acronym IDKM and uh, an internal layer which is called uh, the crypto service provider um, so the reason why we split this uh, these two these two components is that uh, again going back to the previous principle that you really want to uh, have all the decision about keys and algorithms in one place we will really like to make the color of the crypto component to be to really not care about implementation details about uh, uh, about the cryptographic schemes uh, this means that you know the color of the crypto component will need to you know uh, use access cryptographic functionality, but instead of providing the keys directly to the crypto component, they will need to use some uh, common identifiers that are used inside the protocol. So, for example, if I have to verify the signature for, from some node, then uh, the uh, somebody calling into crypto to verify the signature will likely call uh, the verification using the, the the principal ID of the node rather than passing the node the public key directly. And this is the justification for the, the existence of this uh, external layer. So this IDKM layer, this responsibility is really trying to, uh, to map identifiers, for example, node identifiers to public keys and algorithms to be used. This is also where the place where decisions are made about, okay, I'm using these schemes or I'm using these, uh, these other scheme and, 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 and whether it is one key or, or another. And um, right. Uh, this, this IDKM layer is also the place where the public key uh, of, the, of the node uh, are stored locally. Uh, however, this is just you know, half of the story. So in order to, to interact together, nodes also need to have available uh, the keys of all the other nodes in the network, right? So if I'm trying to verify a signature for somebody else, I will also need to, to have the access to these key in, keys in some way. And uh, the place where these keys are, are generally stored is actually the registry canister on the NNS subnet. So the, the crypto component will also need to be able to essentially uh, get these public keys from the registry subnet, which is kind of the source of truth for the, for the keys in the, in the system. And uh, right, so this, this is uh, re regarding the IDTM. Uh, so the internal layer is actually the crypto service provider. And this actually looks a, a more, more conventional. Uh, so it, the, the, this, this layer is less specific to the internet computer. The API of the crypto service provider is more similar to, you know, an API of a, of a standard cryptographic library. So there's no necessarily concepts related to to nodes, but like uh, you can you can um, call this layer really using using keys or keys identifiers, but not. Uh, um, so this is more more, more standard. It's less uh, it's less tied to the, the internet computer protocol. Uh, this is also the place where the secret keys are, are stored. So the CSP is actually the only uh, component that has access to the keys and then and, and, and can uh, um, and then that can access that, can, that generates and, and, and can access the keys. And uh, right. Uh, and most of the cryptographic code is actually implementing here in the, in the CSP. So all the cryptographic that that, that we uh, that I discussed before is actually is implemented here in a, a static cryptographic library, which we call uh, often as a CDIB. And uh, yeah, so this is at a very high level how the, the crypto component is organized. Uh, so next, uh, I would like to go through, uh, you know, piece, piece by piece, you know, in all of these uh, uh, main uh, uh, components that, that makes the, the, the so the, these main building blocks that makes the crypto component. So the first one is the secret key store. So this is a, a persistent store in the crypto component for the keys, as we already said. So the first time that the replica comes up, actually, it, it will generate some initial key material. So more keys are generated during the internet computer protocol, but there are some initial key material that needs to be uh, available in order to, uh, that, that, that needs to be made available to, so it needs some key material in order to be able to participate to the internet computer. And the corresponding public key of this secret key needs to also need to be made available to the rest of the network. 
and uh, yeah, these keys are generated during the first boot of the of the replica and stored in, inside the secret key store. So the secret key store is, uh, is is just a very simple uh, key value store. So this maps some unique identifier, some key ID, to a secret key value and some optional context data that we call key scope. So this key ident identifier is essentially what is used by the CSP to retrieve the corresponding secret key. And, uh, and, the, and often we use the, the, the hash of the public key to be, uh, uh, to be the identifier of the, of the, of the secret key in the, into this key value store. The reason being that uh, the, this IDKM value will need to specify, okay, uh, I, I will have to perform this specific uh, secret key operation with, with this secret key. Uh, and uh, and the public key is available to the to the IDKM layer, so this will this is an easy way so that the uh, the, the the IDKM can uh, can can pass a unique identifier to the to the to the crypto service provider uh, based on the information that is available. The key scope can uh, is some essentially context data that is attached to, to the keys, and uh, this can be used, for example, to filter out keys. Uh, there are some situations that where the CSP uh, may be able to remove keys that are no longer needed, and uh, this is done by uh, by by using this key scope that will also contain uh, some uh, optional metadata, for example. Um, okay. Uh, next, uh, we, we have the public key store. So again, this is very similar to the secret key store. This is uh, 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 used to store the, the own node public key into the into the replica, and this is also populated uh, the first time the node uh, the, the, the 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 replica comes up. Um, the difference is that uh, also these keys will need to be uh, to, this public key will also need to appear in the registry uh, eventually in order to for this not to be able to participate to the internet uh, computer protocol. Uh, the information that we store in this uh, public key public key store is the well some some name to identify the keys, the, the public key value itself, some algorithm ID um, identifiers that specify for which algorithm IDs we can uh, safely use this key. And uh, optionally, we can also include directly already the, 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 the key identifier that is needed for uh, to, to, to use the corresponding secret key in the secret key store. But as said, more uh, uh, we, we generally use the, the hash of the public key as the key identifier. So this uh, can um, uh, this could even be omitted and computed on the spot uh, whenever it's needed. And um, right, so the, the, the main reason for the, for the public key store, uh, I, I partially already said, is one that is, is used to identify the um, the, the correct algorithm ID and key identifier to perform secret operations, so that we can call the CSP correctly. But the other is also to check that uh, that the registry actually contains the correct public key for the node in, at any time. So, for example, if the if the replica comes up, uh, it will first check whether the registry contains the correct set of keys. And, uh, uh, all right. Okay, I already mentioned the, the registry canons there a few times, so probably it makes sense to to also look inside that, even though it's not really part of the crypto component. So in general, in order to be able to run the internal computer protocol, uh, nodes need to have available some metadata, and uh, and this metadata is generally stored inside the the registry canister, which is a canister running on the NNS server. So the registry canister is directly controlled by the governance canister. Uh, which means that, uh, you know, for example, if the, there are some changes in configuration that needs to, uh, to happen in the internet computer, uh, the, the governance can make uh, a proposal, people can vote on it, and if this passes, uh, the, 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 the corresponding changes can be made into the registry, which will then uh, affect how the, the network behaves. Um, the, the registry canister contains a lot of information that is used for, uh, for the internet computer protocol. And, uh, and again, we can abstract the registry as a kind of uh, uh, key value store. Uh, so the, among the information that the internet compute, the, the, sorry, the registry canister contains is, for example, a mapping between uh, uh, subnet IDs. So each subnet and the, the range of canister IDs that, that can run on a, on, on a subnet. This is, for example, used to, uh, if you have crossnet uh, messages, this is used to, to decide where to route the, the messages to, to, to other subnets. So if a canister is trying to interact with a canister on another subnet, this mapping, it will be used uh, to, to, to route to the messages to the correct one. 
Um, for example, the membership information of a subnet is also uh, stored in the registry, so that there's a the, 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 there's a subnet record which includes you know the, the set of uh, nodes that that, that, that that makes a subnet. So, for example, if the if later the, the, this membership changes, the governance canister uh, can make a proposal to add, for example, a node to an existing subnet, and if this is accepted, then the governance will instruct uh, the the changes to appear in the registry. Um, there are also key materials stored in the in the in the, in the registry. So, for example, uh, as I was already referring you earlier on, uh, we uh, every subnet has a, a unique uh, threshold signature that doesn't change uh, over time. Threshold, sorry, threshold public key that doesn't change over time, and this is also stored in the in the in the registry. In addition to this, uh, the, this is the part, part that is mostly relevant to to the to the crypto component. We also have that uh, the registry contains the map between the various node IDs and the individual public keys uh, of the of the nodes. Uh, so we, we have a set of public keys that we need to store in order to be able to run the protocol. So for example, we have node signing key, which are just a simple signature scheme. We have a committee signing key, which are multi uh, signature keys. Then we have some encryption keys that is used for the distributed key generation protocol. And we also have some certificate that's used for the TLS connection between nodes. Um, Another thing that is important to mention is that the registry is actually a version key value store, which means that uh, if I'm adding a new node and this, uh, uh, if I'm trying to add a new node, for example, there was a proposal and this got accepted, then the first the keys of the nodes are actually uh, validated, so the, the keys are verified that, that they are uh, that they are correct and formatted correctly, and they are uh, for the correct scheme that they are currently supported. Uh, but then uh, uh, the, the, the registry version is actually uh, increased. So essentially, if I'm now making modification to the registry, the, 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 the keys that are the, the, the nodes that I'm now adding to the, to the registry will only be visible from the next version of the registry. And the idea is that the information stays in the registry until it gets overwritten. So for example, if the nodes uh, gets faulty and there's a proposal, for example, to remove the nodes from the network, um, uh, then the, 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 the node record can be removed, but until then the keys will be available to, to, to everybody. Um, so since this is just a, a canister on the network, uh, all the other nodes can, can fetch the, 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 the content of the registry and periodically update uh, in the delta between the version of the, uh, of the registry. Um, and uh, the part that is relevant for the, for the, um, for the crypto component is that uh, uh, from the registry, we can we can actually get uh, the specific keys that we need for uh, for specific interaction that, that the crypto component want to perform, and this is made possible by uh, essentially calling out the registry and pass and specifying uh, which registry version uh, from which registry version we actually want the, the keys, and also specifying the node identifier, which is just a principal ID, and uh, the purpose that the the, 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 the for, for the key, which will be in this case, uh, you know, is this a node signing key? Is this a TLS certificate, for example? Uh, right. So now I think I, 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 I covered all the building blocks that are involved uh, either inside the crypto component or, or on the outside. So what I would like to do now is to uh, uh, try to describe uh, how the interaction, uh, how the, the crypto component is integrated in the Internet Computer Protocol and how other components can actually call out to, to crypto to perform uh, uh, cryptographic operation. So the, the, the main, uh, the, the most interesting part, of course, is, is uh, regarding interaction that, 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 that includes, you know, key operations so being either public key operation and secret key operation. Um, so we can, we can look at the, both of them. So, for example, uh, we can start from public key operations. So let's take, for example, that consensus want to make a, want to verify a signature that he received from one of his peers. Um, so what consensus will do is that we will call some APIs that the crypto component provides. And I recall that the, 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 the external API that the, 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 internet, the, the crypto component provides is this IDKM layer. So uh, it will, uh, the, the IDKM layer provides some API that consensus can call and uh, where it can pass the signature that it wants to verify, the message for, 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 uh, for, for the, um, the, the message for, for, for which this signature correspond to together with a couple of identifiers. One will be the node ID. So we, we use node IDs in the network so that the, the, uh, the, the, the node will, will know from whom he, it received the, 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 the signature. So we will specify in this call, okay, I received the, the, the signature from this guy. Please verify that this is really coming from, the, from my neighbors. 
and it will also specify which registered version to use. So consensus periodically uh, fetch, so the, the, the replica periodically fetches the, the latest version of the of the registry, and consensus also agrees on which version of the uh, of the registry is currently to be used. And uh, so this version is also passed to the to the IDKM layer. At this point, the IDKM layer, what it does is that uh, it, it goes to the registry and, and try to, to fetch the keys for the corresponding action. So the, the, the consensus layer would, would like to verify a basic signature, meaning not a multi or threshold signature. And, uh, uh, and therefore, it will go to the registry and say, please get me the, the, the key and the algorithm ID for, the, for, for this specific node uh, and for this specific registry version. And uh, it will get these keys from, from the registry. And what, once the the, the IDCAN layer uh, has uh, retrieved the uh, the public key and algorithm ID, it can then call out to the uh, crypto service provider, which is the internal layer of the crypto component, to perform the actual signature verification. And uh, so, if we go one lo uh, one level down, so in the, in the CSP layer, we we have that the CSP uh, okay receives the call from the IDKM, uh, and uh, and and the, 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 in this case, there's no secret key operation. This is just signature verification. So the, the, the information that the IDKM passed to the CSP layer is sufficient to verify whether the signature is valid or not. Uh, so the CSP will call directly the, the, uh, a cryptographic library method. So the algorithm ID specify essentially which scheme are we going to use for this, uh, for, for this specific uh, interaction. And uh, so that the CSP can call the correct, uh, the correct method. The cryptographic library will just uh, return whether the signature is valid or not, and then the result will be returned to the IDKM layer and eventually the consensus. And so this is how we uh, perform uh, most public key operation. Uh, if you look at the secret key operation, this is also happening in a very uh, similar way. Uh, so again, the, in, at the IDKM le level, uh, uh, so consensus can submit a call to, to to the IDK layer to say, for example, please perform uh, a signature on this object for me. And uh, the IDKM layer will uh, will take this, this message. And uh, so also available to the IDKM layer, there's the, the, the public key store that we mentioned before. So the public key store, uh, again, it, it was uh, uh, co containing you know, some, some identifier for the keys together with the public key value and the, also the key IDs uh, for, for the secret key store, which uh, again, they're just the, the hash of the public key. And uh, so at this point, what the IDKM can do is, is just uh, uh, look inside the, the public key store and get the, the, the keys that, that, that they're supposed to use to, to, to perform like a basic signature. And, uh, and uh, once it gets the, the key ID and the algorithm ID from the public key store, it can then call the CSP uh, to, to actually perform the cryptographic operation. And uh, in the CSP layer, uh, the, what happens is, in this case, we actually need to perform some secret key operations. So the first thing that the CSP is actually doing is uh, uh, going to retrieve this key from the secret key store uh, using the key ID that was provided, and then calling out the, the cryptographic library for the specific algorithm that was also provided. And uh, again, this is a static library that will just return uh, the, the signature back to the CSP, which can then be returned to the first the IDKM and eventually to consensus and then can be used in the, in the rest of the protocol. Um, so this is roughly how we, uh, how we um, deal with the inter so how the crypto component is integrated in the, in the internet computer. So all the other layers can access the, the internet computer in this way. And uh, there are a couple of, of exceptions of uh, how uh, other uh, components interact uh, with, the, with the crypto components. So there are two specific primitives that, uh, that, that sometimes deviate from this general pattern that I just described. Uh, so these two exceptions are threshold signatures. So certain APIs for threshold signature behave slightly differently. Reason being is that not all the key material that is used for related to threshold, key, uh, threshold signature is actually uh, available in the registry. And the reason being that uh, certain threshold signatures are only relevant inside internally to the to the to the subnet; they are not relevant outside. And so this this key material is kept uh, internally uh, to a subnet, and uh, therefore there's another component inside the crypto component which is called threshold signature data store, where this uh, where where this information is periodically loaded. Uh, so instead of uh, going uh, to either the 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 registry or the public key store for certain interaction with the with threshold signature, we actually access these other store. But like the, other than that, the interaction is uh, 
um, it is very similar. The, the other place where the APIs uh, deviates a little bit is for user signatures. So, for example, uh, we the internet computer does, doesn't actually keep a uh, uh, a record of the of the user of the user signing keys, right? So it, it, we do, we don't store them anywhere. So like the whenever a user intera interact with the system, actually uh, what, what a user does is it creates an ingress message that contains a signature on the message that is submitting to the network, but you also touch a public key to it. And so this is the only case where the uh, where actually the, our API allows the caller to, to actually provide a signature. So for user signature, we actually allow the external caller to provide uh, a, a, such a public key from, from the outside. And uh, you know this, this is fine because users are not actually participating into the into the internet computer protocol, so we don't have to verify that, for example, you know, uh, a, a user is uh, you know a node that is a member in a certain subnet. The user just want to authenticate himself using a specific public key. For example, if you want to upgrade your canister, you have to show that you are the controller of the canister, and then you have to you know use the the, the public key that corresponds to the, the identity of the of the controller. And uh, I think I uh, already uh, went maybe uh, a bit longer than I, than I was expecting, so probably I can uh, I can close it here. Uh, just to summarize, uh, I hope that, uh, that, that, that I managed to at least uh, give an idea that uh, what the crypto component is. So this is just you know toolbox that uh, provide all the cryptographic implementation uh, uh, to the rest of the Internet Computer Protocol, and um, it is designed to ensure that the the, the correct schemes and keys are used at any time for any interaction and to try to uh, uh, and, and, and trying to you know uh, to, to guard the secret key from the, the, the rest of the components so the, all the secret key operations are happening uh, inside the, the crypto service provider. And uh, now I'm happy to take some questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrea. So um, let's get started with the question. So first question in the list. What would happen to the consensus mechanism if the registry canister was down, for example, after an upgrade? Right. So yeah. So the, the consensus. So um, so one thing that I, I, I was probably not not uh, very precise uh, uh, is that uh, you the, the the replica do not actually contact. Uh, so whenever we have like such an interaction where the crypto component needs to to access the registry, we don't actually. Um, go make a query on the spot to query the registry, but the, the registry is actually periodically uh, fetched by the, the replica and maintained locally. So we are actually looking at the, at the local version of the, of the registry. Uh, the other thing is that the consensus uh, uh, periodically agrees on the version of the registry that, is, that is need, need, needs to be used. So we, we are essentially never in a situation where, you know, even if the registry is down now, uh, you know, the majority of the nodes will agree of using a, a specific version of the registry and will keep on using that. And, uh, and, and when the, the registry resumes and there will be new version available, uh, then the, the replica will fetch the, the, the most recent version and, uh, and, and keep on working. So the, the availability of the, of the registry is not like generally a problem because uh, we, we still have, you know, uh, local copies of the, of the registry and, uh, and we need to agree on a version uh, bef before using it. Uh, Cool. Thank you, Andrea. So next question, do you test your algorithms against known vulnerabilities? And did you re-implement the various algorithms or are you using libraries? Um, so a bit of both. So, uh, okay, regarding the first question, yes. So, so we, 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 so uh, uh, for example, for against the, this, the, the standard uh, um, implementation of, for example, for the, for the signature scheme, we, we are using, uh, uh, a witch proof uh, framework, which is used to test uh, the implementation against uh, uh, standard vulnerabilities. And uh, regarding the question whether we are actually implementing, re implementing everything or using existing library, uh, I would say that it's a mixture of both. So, for, uh, for anything that we can find, libraries that we, so we review all the libraries that, that, that we are using, especially against. Uh, uh, you know, uh, vulnerabilities or even against uh, constant time. Uh, uh, to check whether they are they provide a constant time implementation. Uh, so any anywhere where we can find good libraries that have like a good performance and that uh, are well maintained and tested, uh, we we tend to try to to use them, especially if they have like a Rust implementations. Um, but there are certain things that are not available. So for example, this distributed key generation protocol is something that was uh, developed uh, uh, in house. So 
there, there, there's no implementation for, for, for this cryptographic scheme. So the zero knowledge proof and the forward secure encryption scheme, uh, for example, for the distributed key generation, those are implemented entirely by us and uh, similarly other, other things. Great, thanks, Andrea. So next question from the community. Once the Bitcoin or Ethereum integration happens, will the keys of these also be in the registry or will there be a separate canister? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure that this is a, a decision that <laughs> has been already settled on. Um, so definitely the keys will be at least in the subnet. So uh, I think it's a bit early to, 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 to see where, where, where these will be uh, generally available, but at least the canister will have, will have access to its own public key and could then advertise its own public keys to, 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 to the outside world. So that I can guarantee, uh, but I'm not sure I can make <laughs> any commitment regarding uh, availability in, in the registry or not uh, at this point. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so next question, what is the lifetime of the highest value cryptographic key? Um, so the highest value cryptographic key is the, uh, the, the main, uh, the threshold, uh, public key of the uh, NNS subnet. So these keys, uh, are, so the public key is actually fixed. So this never change, but the, 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 the signature share that are used to compute the signatures, these are refreshed, uh, very frequently. So there's this uh, distributed key generation protocol that I was describing earlier on. And uh, so this distributed key generation protocol refreshes the, 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 the secret key share. So this is used if a new node join, but even if there's nobody joining the, the network, the key shares are actually periodically refreshed. And uh, these happen uh, very frequently. This is some, the frequency is something that can be configured uh, in, the, in the registry and by votes on the, uh, on the, on the governance uh, system. And uh, I believe that this happens in the matter of every 10 minutes or so at this point. Great, thank you, Andrea. So next question, what are three challenges in terms of the technical side of the work that you do that come to mind? Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I think we face many challenges in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this area. So we have to, you know, uh, uh, so, okay, for, 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 let's take, for example, the, the Bitcoin integration uh, um, project, right? So, okay, in, in this case, we, we are facing with, you know, we, we want to integrate with uh, the, the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchain. So we need to have like uh, something that is compatible with that, right? So first thing is that we need to design a protocol that is actually, uh, that, 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 that could actually work. And we, this means that uh, we also need to design a protocol that is secure under our you know threat model and that can be used uh, to, to to integrate with the internet computer protocol so this means that we need to uh you know uh look out for what's in the literature in terms of you know schemes that that can be that can be used uh and this is just from the cryptographic perspective but 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 also we, we also need to to integrate this you know new feature inside the, the internet computer protocol on itself right so uh, for example yeah we need to you know uh, uh, to, to run this distributed key generation protocol and this will also require the, the needs of consensus so we also need to integrate this protocol inside an existing uh, in, uh, protocol so we need to uh, you know introduce new feature but we, we also and we have to do this in a secure way right so we, we need to extend and update the protocol so that we can actually uh, keep running and uh, and and uh, and, uh, and extend the system and um, and uh, also rolling out this feature will also be, for example, challenging because, uh, uh, for example, there are keys that are uh, at the moment not, uh, not, not that there are, there are keys that are needed for this protocol that are currently not in the system, right? So we we also need to have a way to try to roll out uh, uh, to introduce new keys, for example, that that, that are not uh, at the present in the system and then that will be used for this dedicated protocol. So so this 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 kind of project uh, kind of highlight all the challenges that we face, both. Uh, uh, on the design process, but also on the engineering pro process and uh, on, also on the operational uh, 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 side. Uh. Great, thank you, Andrea. Um, you also have a fan in the chat. Someone said that they found your presentation great. So uh, hat, uh, hat off to you, Andrea. Um, so next question, what are you currently working on? What are upcoming new features supported or enabled by the crypto component? 
Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the threshold the CDSA protocol is really the, the main feature that we're, we are currently working on. And uh, as said, this, this is composed of two things. One is the threshold signature itself. So this is like uh, an interactive protocol. Also, threshold the CDSA uh, are, are a bit more involved than, 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 than BLS signature. So even the protocol for, for signing, it requires more, more effort. Uh, and uh, and so there, there are more there are more well there are more than effort there are more steps in the protocol that needs to that needs to happen and and uh, in order to do this we we are implementing also this uh, interactive distributed key generation protocol which is uh, used to create uh, both the key the key material but also used to for the pre computation step for in order to perform this uh, this signature so this is the main uh, project that we are we are currently working on. Uh, other projects that the crypto component is currently working on are related to, uh, for example, uh, you know, performance improvement. Uh, so we are trying to, you know, increase the size of the subnet. So we also want to make sure that you know, increasing size of the subnet doesn't doesn't actually uh, introduce uh, bottlenecks in terms of efficiency. And crypto is, you know, one likely place where bottleneck could, could happen. Um, the the other thing that we are working on is uh, regarding hardening the the. the the, the secret keys and and trying to isolate as much as possible the process that uh, that, that involves the um, that does the secret key operation. Thank you, Andrea. You have another fan in the chat okay. <laughs> saying thanks. This was very informative. It's easy to get lost with all of the cryptography involved here. It's good to have a summary like this one. So um, so well done, Andrea. I think people uh, find this very useful. Um, so next question, is the secret key store secured by some special means? For example, do you use uh, hardware security modules also called HSMs? Right, so this is a very good question. So, uh, um, so the, the short answer is that no, at the moment we don't use any HSM. Uh, we aim to try to isolate the process uh, where the secret keys you know, are used uh, as much as possible, but uh, um, yeah, we, we don't have HSM. We actually something that we investigated in the past to see whether this was feasible or not. And in there, we are actually facing some challenges. And uh, the main challenges are that uh, we will need to have very well customized HSMs because uh, most of the cryptographic primitives that we are using are actually pretty novel. Uh, so I think it's very easy to find, you know, HSM, for example, for, you know, doing uh, signatures or I don't know, even for probably ECDSA signature or uh, EDDSA signature is probably very used to, to have support for this. But I think already to, to have support for BLS signatures, so standard BLS signature, not even you know, multi or threshold signature, I think this is already quite difficult. So uh, so yeah, we will, this is something that we would like to, to have eventually, to have like some HSM guarding the secret key store. Uh, but this is something that will require uh, quite more work and also support on the hardware side and also make so these are uh, that doesn't need to just exist, but it also needs to be very widely available so that you know node providers can easily get access to it and install it into into their data center. So there are uh, there are quite quite some challenges there. Uh, there there are there are ways that uh, that one can try to you know isolate and trying to secure the 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 the, the security key store in software before before you do it on, on hardware, and that's uh, you know the, the first steps that we are taking at the moment. Great, thank you, Andrea. So next question, are you planning to support any post-quantum crypto schemes, i.e. secure against quantum computers? Uh, yes, I mean, so uh, this is like, uh, at least in our mind is on the roadmap. Uh, so this is not something that we can, of course, uh, you know, implement and roll out soon, right? This is uh, something that will require heavy, you know, research and development. Uh, effort uh, so there are some challenges there as well in order to to be able to 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 rely entirely on on um, on post quantum primitives um so for example one challenge that that, that you currently have is really for these uh, uh, uh you know these, these threshold signatures so the uh, i believe that there may even be you know threshold signature available there but like uh, what we are doing with threshold signature with this distributed key generation so that we uh, we, we can reshare keys uh, in such a way that the public keys remain remains somewhat static and doesn't change. Uh, I think this is quite challenging, and uh, I don't think that there's a, that there are schemes out there that can actually support that. So, uh, short the answer is that yeah, we would like to, but this will require this will probably uh, require a long time before before we get there. But but this is on 
on our radar and this is something that we are trying to actively work, in, work on or start work on. Great, thanks, Andrea. Next question, who is allowed to add or modify data in the registry and how are these access restrictions enforced? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so generally the, the governance is the one that make, makes uh, modification to the registry. I think there are portion of the registry that can be modified directly by the node uh, operator. So the, the node operators are registered. So the, the record of the node operator are on the registry themselves and the node operators, meaning the, the, the the, the independent node, node operators in the, in the various data center can then register their node. So the, the registration of the node actually happens, uh, is authorized by the node operator himself. So the way this happens is that uh, when the node register, uh, uh, as I said, when the replica starts for the first time, the, the replica uh, generates some, uh, some key material, and this key material needs to be sent to the, the registry. And this interaction between the node and the registry is actually certified by the, the, the node operator. So node operator has some HSM for some signature scheme and they can uh, authorize this interaction with the registry. So only the node operators can make, uh, can add nodes. Also node operator have like a certain allowance that is the setup by the governance canister. So they cannot exceed the, their allowance of nodes. But uh, yeah, so, so generally, either the governance can change the, the registry or the node operator, but limited to add and remove nodes, the controller. Okay, excellent, Andrea. So um, we actually did get a lot more questions uh, within the Q&A. Uh, some of the questions I think are not uh, within the scope of the talk at hand. So for example, there is an internet identity question. I would suggest you field that over to our Reddit or a developer forum. We have some questions around like, Bitcoin integration uh, regarding time frame. So I can actually speak to this. The last I heard from the team was that uh, as a stretch goal by end of year, uh, realistically, beginning of next year. Um, but yeah, we got a ton of really good questions from the community today. Um, so unless anyone has any further questions, we are at the end of the question list. So. Thank you so much, Andrea, for this very informative talk on the crypto component. Thank you to the community you for all of your thoughtful questions. And uh, we'll see you next time at a future community conversation. Thank you.